Happy Monday, everybody. My name is Brandon Rosa, and welcome to another episode of the Xbox in 10 podcast, your weekly source of Xbox gaming news covered in around 10 minutes. Every Monday, this Xbox podcast covers new game releases, the previous week's Xbox gaming news, and we all learn an Xbox-related fun fact together. This show is on podcast services around the world, so please subscribe on your favorite and leave a review. Xbox in 10.com, no numbers, is your quick source for links to all of our podcast destinations and social media profiles, which you can follow at Xbox in 10. To start, let's talk game releases. The big games out last week were Wolfenstein Youngblood, a surprise announcement out of QuakeCon of the original Doom, Doom 2 and Doom 3, and Power Roomy. The big game coming out this week on July 30th is Madden NFL 20, also Warhammer 40,000 Inquisitor Martyr Prophecy, Mutant Year Zero Road to Eden Seed of Evil, Bear With Me The Complete Collection, Pilot Sports, Solo Islands of the Heart, The Church in the Darkness, Varany, As Divinal Menace, and Meow Motors. Now on to last week's biggest news stories, and we have seven to cover this week. Number one, new approaches to home and Xbox voice commands roll out to Xbox insiders. Bradley Rossetti at XboxWire.com writes, As Xbox insiders, your feedback helps inform the decisions and updates we make on Xbox, from new features to how gamers interact with the console itself. Based on your valuable feedback, we've been continuing to iterate on two key experiences on Xbox, delivering you a faster home experience and evolving the way we support Xbox voice commands to improve the voice experience. Evolving Home The home on Xbox One is the first thing you see when you turn on your Xbox One, and we want to deliver an easy and seamless experience for you to navigate your console. We've heard your feedback and have continued to iterate on home to get you into your gaming experiences faster and keeping more of your content front and center. With today's update, we're experimenting with a streamlined user interface. Interface. With this new experimental home design, the first thing you'll notice is we've removed the twists from the top of the home in favor of separate buttons that launch your gaming experiences. The goal is to let you jump into Xbox Game Pass, Mixer, Xbox Community, and Microsoft Store quicker than ever. We've also shifted things around to make more room for your recently played titles. Changes the voice commands on Xbox One. Last fall, we expanded voice commands to hundreds of millions of smart devices by enabling Xbox One to connect with Xbox Skill for Katana and Alexa-enabled devices. Xbox Skill continues to grow and change based on your feedback, including new updates that rolled out earlier this month. Building on these efforts, we are now further evolving the way we support voice commands on Xbox and are moving away from on-console experiences to cloud-based assistant experiences. This means you can no longer talk to Cortana via your headset. However, you can use the Xbox skill for Cortana via the Cortana app on iOS, Android, and Windows, or via Harman Kardon Invoke speaker to power your Xbox One, adjust volume, launch games and apps, capture screenshots, and more, just as you do with your Alexa-enabled devices today. We'll also continue to improve the Xbox skill across supported digital assistants and continue expanding our Xbox voice capabilities in the future based on fan feedback. I remember being there on launch day for Xbox One with one of the worst dashboards for any console ever, completely dependent upon voice commands as they tried to push forward that connect, but each incremental update has gotten better and better. Visually from this design, I do enjoy it myself. Let's see how it works in action. Number two, Remedy Boss wants to make Alan Wake 2, but only if everything comes together the right way. Sharif Saeed at VideoGame247.com writes, Alan Wake creator Sam Lake is interested in making a sequel, but says it's only going to be harder to put together than the original. Speaking on an upcoming episode of IGN Unfiltered, Remedy's Sam Lake said the bar today is much higher than it was when the original Alan Wake released. Clearly, however, Remedy is interested in the franchise having recently picked up publishing rights, but that doesn't necessarily mean a new Alan Wake is in development, even if the idea is one Lake wants to explore. Quote, I want to make it, it's a curious thing, he said. At this point, so much time has passed, I feel like that bar is higher in some ways. It needs to be done right if it's ever done. Everything needs to click into place, which is really hard to make it happen. So many things for those big games to be greenlit. Alan Wake was never a massive hit, but is fondly remembered as one of Remedy's most bizarre projects. The team is currently focused on shipping control, which is a little over a month away. I never played any of the Alan Wake games myself, but I know it's a cult classic for Xbox fans of old. Number 3. Call of Duty Modern Warfare Gunsmith Feature Detailed Tom Marks at IGN reports, Teasing Call of Duty Modern Warfare's full multiplayer reveal next week, today Activision shared details on its gunsmith weapon customization system. An official blog post described the multiplayer gunsmithing system as robust weapon customization that will allow you to modify both your primary and secondary loadout weapons. It will also allow you to equip things like sights, stocks, and muzzles to your guns that will alter the stats however suits you. Each weapon will be able to equip 5 custom parts at once, but will have more than 5 slots to choose from, requiring you to pick which pieces are important to you. For example, assault rifles will have slots for a muzzle, laser, optic, stock, rear grip, magazine, under barrel, barrel, and a perk, but you'll only be able to fill 5 of them. A full reveal of the gunsmith system alongside gameplay of Modern Warfare's multiplayer mode will be coming August 1st. Thursday cannot come soon enough, as we are all very eagerly awaiting this full multiplayer reveal. You know where to find me on Thursday. Number 4. Grand Theft Auto V's Casino finally opens its doors today. Sean Carey at True Achievements writes, 
After years of speculation, rumor, and hoaxes, the grand opening for Grand Theft Auto V's very own casino is finally upon us, with players able to strike it big or lose it all on the tables today. Construction is over and the Diamond Casino and Resort is open boasting all the usual gambling classics such as 3-card poker, blackjack, roulette, and even slot machines. There's also some virtual horse racing or a spin the wheel game if that's more your thing. However, gambling isn't the only thing included in this update. Sitting atop the casino is the Master Penthouse. Purchasing this luxury space gives players access to VIP lounges, high limit tables, and aircraft and limousine services. Players can not only customize their penthouses to suit their tastes, but more importantly, owning this primal piece of real estate gives owners access to all new cooperative missions. Maybe you can win back some of that money you lost at the blackjack tables. This update caused an uproar in the online communities. The negative fervor amongst loot boxes and gambling and video games continued as you could put real world money into the game to gamble for in-game money, but not be able to cash out in real world money. Know what you're buying, people. Be smart. Number 5. Fallout 76 is getting a new Battle Royale map and cooperative vault raid. Zach Zweizen at Kotaku writes, At QuakeCon 2019, Bethesda announced some new content coming to Fallout 76 later this year, including a new map for the nuclear winter mode and new raids. They also released a new updated roadmap for summer 2019. Nuclear Winter Fallout 76 52 player Battle Royale mode is getting an all new map. It is based on the area of Fallout 76 called Morgantown, and it will include more verticality and will be set in a more urban environment. The current map is more rural filled with trees and barren hills. The new map is coming in September alongside some quality of life improvements for the mode. Coming sooner is a new Vault Raid. Set in Vault 94, the new raid will feature three missions that will rotate weekly and will support four player groups. Completing these missions will reward players with new armor and social rewards. Bethesda also confirmed they are working on another raid, but didn't give any specific details on that raid. Beyond these two bigger pieces of new, Bethesda shared a bit more information about the upcoming Wastelanders update. This is the update that will add NPCs into Fallout 76. It was confirmed at the panel today that players will talk to these NPCs using dialogue trees that are, according to Bethesda, more like Fallout 3 than Fallout 4. Bethesda is planning on releasing the Wastelanders update in November of this year. I got Fallout 76 as a gift last Christmas, but never even put it into play. But if this new Wastelanders update has NPCs and is more like Fallout 3 than 4, well, maybe it's time to finally give it a try. Number 6. Today's Rage 2 update will introduce New Game Plus. Emogen Beckling at Eurogamer writes, Rage 2 had a lackluster start to life, but the efforts to improve it continue. Today's update introduces three new ways to play the game. New Game Plus, Iron Man Mode, and an Ultra Nightmare difficulty, as well as fixes and quality of life improvements. Players who found the tutorials and intro dialogue cringeworthy will now be able to skip them, and the addition of a flashlight to the game is welcome. Other improvements include bug fixes, pop-ups no longer pausing the game, and a camera dead zone slider. There will also be a new voice pack, undoubtedly to tie in with the release of the new Wolfenstein game as it will feature the voice of BJ Blazkowicz. Rage 2 looked good from afar, but with all the mixed reviews, it did not warrant me spending the money on it. If it ever comes to Xbox Game Pass, which I assume it will in the future, I'll give it a shot. Number 7. A little different for this show, but I wanted to include it. Fortnite player takes second place at World Cup duos using a controller. Patricia Hernandez at Polygon writes, the duo's portion of the Fortnite World Cup is over, and a pair has been named victorious. Teens Nifrox and Aqua have won 3 million for coming in first place. Perhaps more surprising is the couple who came in second place. Rojo and a 15-year-old Jaden Wolfie's Ashman, the latter was actually a UK player playing with a controller. Generally speaking, when it comes to competitive games, it is accepted wisdom that mice are superior than controller inputs and shooters, or at least allow for more precision. And to be sure, most participants at the World Cup were using Epic-issued Logitech mice. But Epic also allowed the option to compete with standard Xbox One console controllers, as well as Scuf Vantage controllers, so two participants went that route. There was some controversy around this decision, as controllers are given aim assist. They are playing with the same settings that are available on the live game, and Epic Games representative told Polygon. All the same, Wolfie seems quite proud of his gear usage. His YouTube account has a couple of videos where he points out he is an unstoppable controller player. One video even shares Wolfie's settings. For his performance during the tournament, Wolfie's and his partner have won 2.25 million. It's an unexpected result that fans are rallying around the idea of a quote, controller game that celebrates Fortnite pros who are competing using console peripherals. Nice story for all of us hardcore console gamers. Shout out to that Xbox One Elite controller, the best controller ever made. As always, we end the show by all learning an Xbox related fun fact together. And today is another little history lesson by Tom Gresham at itstillworks.com. This one is about the Kinect launch. 
The Kinect sensor is for Xbox 360 were the fastest selling consumer electronics launch ever, according to the Guinness Book of World Records. Microsoft sold 10 million Kinect units between the device's introduction in November of 2010 and March 2011. The selling of 8 million Kinects in the first 60 days of the device's availability, running from November 4, 2010 to January 3, 2011, was the most consumer electronics units ever sold in the first two months of its availability on the retail market. I didn't get a Kinect for the 360 until about a year after its launch, and me and my friends had a few great weekends partying with Dan Central. Thank you all for listening to the Xbox in 10 podcast, your weekly source of Xbox gaming news covered in around 10 minutes. If you like the show, please subscribe on your favorite podcast service, share it with your friends, and follow on all social media at Xbox in 10. This past week, I've been so crazy at work that unfortunately I haven't had any time to game, but hopefully this week I'll get back to completing the Modern Warfare Remastered campaign. I only have a few missions left. My name is Brandon Rosa. You can follow me on Xbox at Brosa93. I hope you all have a great week and keep on gaming.